morning, everybody. It's good to see you. A special welcome to all those who are watching us or worshiping online here as well. Um, <clears throat> so how's your spring going so far? Good? Okay, it's, it's here finally, huh? On my way in this morning, I was just admiring the leaves and all the, the dew on the leaves so early in the morning. And, you know, the leaves on some trees are pretty much fully out already. And um, that's really great for the end of May, so we're really blessed to have an early spring. If this is your first season in Canada, you're probably thinking spring is really late and it's never going to come. Well, I hate to tell you spring was early this year. <laughs> A little bit anyways. So I've gotten most of my garden planted. How many of you here plant vegetable gardens? Okay, we got to talk sometime, okay? I love to talk about vegetable gardening and... Uh, uh, so anyways, feel free to strike up a conversation anytime. Something has uh, just really struck me lately. And, you know, it's just how fortunate we are here at River Cross Church. I know the last two years have, have certainly been tough for, for so many people and for, for us as a church as well. But we're coming through that. And each week I look at you folks, you keep on coming back. And now that's just great. You're encouraging one another. You're encouraging us as staff. You know, our pastor years ago uh, coined a phrase that we are a beautiful community. And each week, I guess I see in you all, I see that beauty. There's those who have been here for several decades. You know, some people here may say that they are our old uh, Victoria Streeters. Victoria Street was a church that joined with the Main Street Church around 1970 or in the early 70s. And so some people originally attended that church. Uh, some people identify as old-time Main Streeters and have been, been there for many, many years. Our longest-serving member just died a few months ago. He was a member of Main Street for 76 years. And there's many left like that. And, and I just want to say that uh, whether you are a former Victoria Streeter or a Main Streeter, you're such a part of our beautiful community, even the foundation of the beautiful community. People who have raised their families here in the 70s and 80s and 90s, who have made sure that this church continued through thick and thin, through the good, bad, and the ugly, uh, so that it's still here for all of us today. You are such a vital and wonderful part of our beautiful community. And then for children of those families who have gotten jobs or, or gone to school and returned uh, to work here in our city and to our church and are now raising their own families here at River Cross, well, you are like a two or three generational part of our beautiful community. And again, such a part of that beauty. People who have come through the ministries of our Hope Mission or Mandarin Ministries, another wonderful part that makes us even more beautiful. Many people uh, in our city have started coming, attending this church, especially since we moved uh, to this River Cross site here on 61 Forbes Drive. And again, you make us even more beautiful as we gather together. People and newcomers from countries from around the world who are coming here with their work, transferring or finding jobs and making St. John and River Cross their home. We're so thankful and again, we become even more beautiful. International students who come and study here and find community with our young adults and with so many others in our congregation. We learn so much from each other. And God is showing us such a wonderful piece of heaven right here on earth in our beautiful community that we call River Cross. And the new folk each week who make that difficult step inside the door for the very first time into a strange building uh, with people that they don't know. First of all, I want to thank you <laughs> and also hope that the process is a little bit easier with some, some good hospitality. And you know, even without knowing it, uh, you again are making us even a little bit more beautiful. It's wonderful to meet people and experience the love and the comfort of our church family. And even today, too, many of our beautiful community are worshiping online, and uh, they are still ever so much part of our beautiful community that we call River Cross. And all that pretty much leads me into my message. 
Everyone likes to meet new people. Sometimes it's a pleasant chat in a lineup at a grocery store. Sometimes it's someone new at church or maybe at your work. Sometimes it may be a new relationship. Well, this morning I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. And his name is Vincent, and he's from the Philippines. What I know about Vincent is this. Vincent is a nice guy. He's a hard worker. He does a great job caring for his mama, his brothers and sisters. He's a very, very popular uncle with his nieces and nephews. I also know that his home was totally destroyed in November 2013 by Typhoon Yolanda and had to be totally rebuilt. Raymer, one of our very own river crossers here, had his home destroyed in the same storm. Vincent has a very important job. He and his coworkers care for their community. Here are some pictures of him along with some of his workmates. If a typhoon is coming, they warn residents of the dangers. They are involved with community and with environmental issues. They have planted trees. They have done vaccinations for COVID-19. And every year or so, they carry out clinics around the area where people can bring their dogs to be vaccinated against rabies. They serve their community faithfully and do so many important things. And Vincent is watching on our live stream. I just want us to thank Vincent right now for all the great work that he and his coworkers do. And as well, if you're worshiping online, feel free to say hi to Vincent in the chat box as well. Vincent shared a picture with me a while ago, and it really caught my attention and inspired me for this message. I kept staring at it, and, and I would see many different details the more I looked at the picture. And I just couldn't stop thinking about it. It was a picture uh, taken at one of the rabies vaccination clinics. He said that the clinic was almost over when all of a sudden, they heard this little boy from a distance. He was, he was running with his dog and he was yelling from a distance. And he was saying, please, please don't leave. Please give my dog this vaccine. Please, please, I want my dog to have the vaccine. Please don't leave. He was begging them. Can you please help us? Here's the picture that he shared with me. It's a great picture, eh? And that's Vincent administering the vaccine. As I looked at the picture, I started to think of the story leading up to the picture. The boy must have lived within the vicinity because I don't think he could have carried the dog for miles. He came to the clinic at the very end and was almost begging the workers to please give his dog the vaccine. So he must have found out about the clinic maybe at the last minute. Maybe he was busy with other things and lost track of time and thought he might have missed it. Or maybe he wasn't sure if the clinic was for everyone but then at the last minute, he just said, I don't care. It's my dog. I'm going to try. Either way, he didn't want to miss it. So he grabbed his dog and he ran towards the clinic shouting for the workers, please don't leave. Please don't leave. I know it's late, but please, please, can you give my dog the vaccine? He obviously loves his dog very much and will do anything to make sure that he's cared for. The little boy is, is pretty well dressed. I love the hat and the shoes that he has on. The dog is quite interested with what's happening to his hind end, as you can see. You can see that his paws are really stretched out, okay? He's, that proves that he's quite nervous. This is possibly the, maybe the first vaccine that the dog has ever received. But even though you see that the dog is very nervous, still this little guy can hold a dog that is a fair size. So I know that the dog must trust him. That's an awesome picture. And I just want to give special thanks to Vincent for sharing that with me and for giving me the inspiration for this message. As I thought about it more and more and continued to study this picture, a passage of scripture came to my mind, one that was quite similar to the picture. One where four friends were so concerned about the health of their friend that they carried him to Jesus to be healed. Listen to the scripture from, from Mark chapter 2. It says this, when Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. 
While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, What is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, Why do you, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven? Or stand up, pick up your mat and walk. So I'll prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, We've never seen anything like this before. You see in the scripture that there were four guys who shared the passion of that little boy in the photo. Only their passion was for their friend who was paralyzed. The scriptures don't really tell the story behind the story. We don't know if the man was paralyzed by, at birth or whether it was a result of an accident or an injury. We don't know if the men who were carrying him were family members or friends. But what we do know is this. They heard Jesus was in town. And they had faith that he could heal their friend. So much faith that they were willing to risk injury or arrest by removing a section of a roof and lowering him down by Jesus. They were passionate about bringing their friends to Jesus. And as a result, the man had his sins forgiven and left the home carrying his mat and healed of his affliction. So, so far I've told you about five people or five, about the passion of five people. And now I want to ask you a question. Are you passionate about bringing your friends to Jesus? No, I'm not talking about like old-fashioned evangelism techniques like passing out pamphlets or, you know, have you ever seen someone drop a copy of a $20 American bill on one side and John 3.16 on the other side? Have you ever picked up one of those before? I have. It's rather disappointing to find out it's not really a $20 bill, especially when you're already a believer. <laughs> but I'm talking about passion. Passion from way down deep, care and concern and love for our family members and friends, and even for people that we haven't yet met or may never meet. How can we bring people closer to the Father? Some people do that very naturally, even without realizing they're doing it. And that's always the best way. But sometimes we have to be a bit more intentional about things. And that's certainly fine too. I want to do three things in the remainder of the message here. I hope to ignite a greater passage or passion in us to bring others to the Father. I want to give you some very practical ways we might be able to do that. And I want to bring us all back to the picture and to the scripture that I've talked about. Okay, so first, some very practical ways that we, we can bring others to the Father. And these are very practical ways. One is, is very simply pray for people. It's very basic. And it's something we can all do. And it's the most important thing we can do as well. We can pray for the needs of others, family needs, uh, job needs, social needs, health needs. We can pray for the spiritual needs of others. Whatever God puts on our hearts, whether they're physical needs or spiritual needs. Pray for people and then watch for the opportunities that God puts in our way that we can help. Okay, that's important. Don't just pray for people and then forget about it. Pray for them and look for ways that you can, uh, that you can see God working in that and the opportunities he puts in your way to help. If praying is the only thing you can do, it's still significant. But hopefully you can pray for people and also follow it up with one or several of the other things I'm going to mention. We can all be involved in ministries of care. Look for ministries to, or look for ways to help and build relationships with others, to meet needs, and to belong to a group that carries out ministries to one another. 
This has been the heartbeat of our ministry here at River Cross for many years. Look at what our ministry, uh, our mission statement says. We're going to read it out, out loud. And whenever we read this at our board of management meeting, we always stand to read it. So let's stand together as we read this mission statement here together. Okay, you ready? River Cross Church exists to reach out to the people of St. John with the love of Jesus Christ by clearly proclaiming the gospel and by providing ministries of care so the people will become disciples of Jesus Christ. Thank you. You may be seated. Look at the opportunities that are available right here at Rivercross to be involved in ministries of care. We have our Hope Mission, Christmas Ministries, Moms on a Mission, Grief Share, Life Groups, Bible Studies, Mandarin Ministries, Care for Newcomers and Refugees. Uh, sometimes we offer divorce care. There's many other ministries too that I haven't mentioned that still meet other people's needs in different ways. But, there's some, but these are some of the main ministries that specifically uh, cater to individuals. Jesus, throughout his ministry on earth, was involved with ministries of care. And this is one of the most compassionate ways that we can bring others to the Father. As well, again, very basic, we can give financially. And sometimes this is something that we don't often connect to bringing others to Jesus. We may give and then just not think about it again. But we have to think and be more intentional in our giving. We're called upon and asked to be proportional and consistent givers. Without that, the ministries of the church would not be able to take place. Kind of think of it like a ship. You have to build the ship, you have to uh, prepare the ship, you have to staff the ship before the ship can finally deliver its cargo. And really the same is true with the church. The basic needs have to be met first, but after that, look at all of the opportunities we have to be a blessing to others. Look at the ways we can support our hope mission and be a blessing to those in our North End and Crescent Valley. Look at the ways we can keep up our 211 Main Street facility to house the food bank and other important ministries to our old North End. Look at the ways we can be a blessing to our city through our Christmas ministries that we're involved with each year. Our giving to missions, to our convention, to our denominational schools, to Camp Tlachitic, and so many other ministries that we support each year. And also, your gifts can go so many places that you can't. Let me repeat that. Your gifts can go so many places where you can't. This church has faithfully supported our Ukrainian brothers and sisters in a time when they were fleeing war. And just over the past three months, just the last three months, you have given so far well over $30,000 towards that. That's really something. And I have to tell you, you really make a pastor proud. You really do. A few weeks ago, we saw some pictures. And I would like to share those pictures with you once again. We saw the man who lost his entire family, who thought he had totally lost his faith. We saw the little boy whose parents were killed as they tried to flee their apartment building, who was now being housed at the Katowice church. And we saw other women and children seeking refuge from bombs and guns and foreign occupiers. Through your gifts, you have had part in feeding them of clothing them, of giving them warmth and comfort in such a difficult time, of giving them a place where they could once again find spiritual... <laughs> was the hardest thing I ever worked for, I think. <laughs> Encouragement matters. And not only in the big things. When you're shopping, when you go for a walk... When you go through your day-to-day -day routine, or even when you get that annoying call from a telemarketer, you have no idea what people are going through in their lives. No idea. You have no idea of the pain and the hurt and of the loneliness that they may be feeling. No, you have no idea. And it's impossible for you to know the difference, the gentleness, encouragement, 
that a pleasant smile or a few kind words can make in their lives. But we don't have to know. We just have to do our best to represent Christ in each of these situations. That doesn't mean we allow others to take advantage of us. It just means that our attitudes are ones of encouragement and kindness. And finally, I just want you to to recognize that God has made us all so different in so many ways, with many gifts and many different strengths. Be creative with the gifts that God has given to you. You may come up with a far greater way to lead people to the Father than any of the ones that I have talked about here. God will never expect more from you than you can give. But if he has given you a particular gift or talent or even a passion for something, then he expects you to use it and to bless others as a result. So I've talked about several ways that we can help in some way to bring people to the Father. Prayer, ministries of care, financial giving, child sponsorship, friendship, companionship, encouragement, being creative with our gifts and abilities. Probably many of you are involved with several of these already. Maybe you need to choose a new one, or maybe you need to be more intentional in the ways that you choose to point others towards the Father. People notice, the community notices, and the Father notices. We're going to take another look back at at the picture I showed you earlier. You know, the people at the vaccination clinic weren't all that excited that this particular dog came to get vaccinated. I'm sure they vaccinated dozens or maybe even a hundred dogs that day. What excited them so much was this particular little boy. It was his passion. It was his great love for his dog. It was the way that he was going above and beyond to make sure that his dog got the vaccination, that his dog would be safe and healthy, even running up to them, begging them not to leave, begging them to give the dog the vaccine, yelling from a distance, carrying his dog and begging that he could have the vaccine. So much so that they made sure that they documented it with this picture. They saw his passion. They saw his effort. They saw his love for his dog. And that's what made them so excited. Let's look at the passage I read from Mark chapter 2. We see four men carrying their friend to Jesus on a mat. They were so determined that they get their friend to Jesus. They had heard what Jesus could do. They had faith that he could heal their friend. And now Jesus was right there, right there in the community. But they still had trouble getting to him. So they tore a hole in the guy's roof and lowered, lowered him down, lowered their friend down right in front of Jesus. In the scripture... Jesus didn't marvel at the man's faith. He forgave the man, healed the man. But the thing that really excited Jesus was the faith and the determination of the four men who did everything in their power to get their friend, whom they loved, to Jesus, even risking damage to property and maybe making themselves look bad or foolish. It was the first thing that Jesus commented on. He said, seeing their faith, He said to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, get up and go home. Jesus marveled at their faith. He got excited about their faith and their passion. It was the first thing he commented on. They got it. They understood and Jesus was amazed at their great faith. The paralyzed man in the story was almost a secondary part of the story. So today my question for you is simple. Just as the workers were excited about the passion of the little boy, and just as Jesus was amazed by the man's faith, will God be excited over you as he sees your passion and your faith? As you pray expecting great things to happen, will God marvel at your faith? As you give of your finances to the work of the ministry, will he see your passion to change lives? to provide ministries of care, to be the hands and feet of Jesus here on earth, and to form relationships and share your faith as you love without condition and accept others as they are. Will God rejoice over you because you recognize his heart and share the same love and the same compassion of Jesus? Will God be excited over you? 
In Zephaniah chapter 3, we see an image of God singing and dancing over us with so much joy and so much enthusiasm. The worker's heart were excited and blessed over the little boy bringing his dog. Jesus' heart was excited and blessed over the four men bringing their friend. Will you allow God to be excited, to sing and to dance and to rejoice over you as you, through faith, sacrifice, and love, bring others to the Father? Will you allow the heart of God to be blessed and excited over you? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the examples we can see of passion and faith in these four men carrying their friend to Jesus. We thank you for this little boy as well. In his passion for his dog, we pray for him and his family as well. May they all be an inspiration to us to leave, for us to leave our comfort zone, to be more passionate about bringing others closer to you and to grow in our faith. Help us as we deal with doubts and unbelief and help us to put more and more faith in you as we pray, as we give, and as we engage friends and our neighbors with the good news of your love and peace, of the new life found in you. Help us in faith to see the eternal results as one day we stand in your presence together through Christ. Amen.